Welcome back to the Granny Granary Theatre here at the Museum of Treasures in Waterford for this, the first of our Meet the Candidate sessions. And please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Next question comes from Michael Garland, who is the CEO of the Waterford Chamber of Commerce. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, the first 100 days of a new government will lay the foundations uh, for the next term in office. Can uh, the members of the panel please tell us one key foundation stone that they would like to achieve in the first 100 days in office? Let's take it from Seamus Ryan. Well, one of the first things I think we need to do is to set, it, set up a strategic investment bank. We need to get people in this country back to work and we believe that this is one of the key ways of doing it. As I said earlier, I think there's an opportunity here by setting up the strategic investment bank to, to draw down on two billion from the National Pension Reserve Fund. Uh, to use that money to draw funding from Europe uh, to, to get people back to work and set up a 500 million jobs initiative. And I, I mentioned earlier things like shovel ready projects. But we also need to do more. I'm meeting business people here in Morford or Watford City and County who are having difficulty in getting credit from banks. Now we bailed out the banks, but yet they won't help out local business, they won't help out lo local householders who are struggling to pay back debt. So we need to, to, through the Strategic Investment Bank, to free up money and to, and to give credit uh, back to business uh, to help them employ people. Thank so you, that's, James. That's one of the first things that we would do. Okay. Quality coffee? Yeah, first of all, we've committed already that if there is to be cuts and efficiencies, it has to start at the very top. And Fine Gael are committed to starting with politics itself. We were the first party to say that we would abolish the Shannon. We also want to propose uh, reductions in the number of members in Dáil Éireann. We also were the first party to say that ministerial care should be pooled. So we will set example by reforming the political system first, by saying, look, we can do it this a better way and a more efficient way. Following on from that, we want to implement measures through a budget that will support small businesses, that, as I said earlier, will reduce the lower tax rate to stimulate employment on the very retail shops around the streets of Waterford, Dungar and Tremor, and many other towns in this county. It's about stimulating our economy, getting people back to work. Unless we do that, our deficit is going to overcome us. We will have a very short time to do it, and I've said this to people on the doors. If we don't address this problem now, be brave and stand up and address it in the short term. If we try to prolong it, the IMF can move in here like, like they did in other countries, like Latvia and other places. They will take it out of our hands and they will impose the cuts, and we will have no say whatsoever. They're in here with conditions that we can still work within. They'll come in here and they'll make, they'll make unilateral cuts across the board unless we try and help ourselves first. John Halley. Um, the latest statistics are appalling. 1,220 <laughs> small businesses went into liquidation last year. We implied, or the biggest employers, this is the first thing that should be done, the biggest employers in the state at present, they employ 800,000 people. 800,000 people. Now, one third, the SMBs will tell you themselves that they now expect one third of all small businesses to make people redundant next year. This is where we have to stop the immediate hemorrhage. I'll tell you why. Because this is where it affects the local, the local town, the Tremors, the Dunmores, the Waterford City that create the small amounts of employment. Maybe two people, maybe three people, maybe five people. And this is how it could be done. It's quite simple economics again. I spoke to a chap here in Waterford last week that's about to leave someone go. He pays him the minimum wage, regretfully, because that's all he can afford to pay him. The chap has been working with him six years in the business. What happens now is he has to work harder, he leaves that chap go, he has to pay, the, the, the state has to pay him 80% of his statutory redundancy, and he, it'll be almost a life sentence he going on social welfare. So it's going to cost the state about €21,000 per year to let this chap go so that they can pay him social welfare, give him his redundancy, and the loss of tax revenue to the state. It's simple economics. All we need to do, and the small businesses groups are calling for this, we sponsor... Like this question was, can we, the panel yes, name one key foundation... We sponsor one name. worker. If we were to sponsor one worker to stop them from yet being made redundant in small businesses, we would immediately take 30 to 40,000 people off the dole without any loss of revenue to the state. Okay, thank you, John. Michael, do you want to respond to that? Yeah, thanks for that. I would have thought one of the first things that everyone would have said, and everyone was talking about leaders leading, is... Nobody in this campaign has actually put their hand up and said, we'll start with ourselves, we'll reduce our salary. In the UK, an MP gets £65,000 a year. I would have thought everyone would have put their hand up. And actually turned around and said, I'm willing to work for the extra 75000 euros a year. I'm willing to cut my expenses. 
I'm not going to charge. I'm not going to charge the taxpayer for travelling back and forward to work. Every business you talk to, people have had to do that themselves. And I think leaders lead. And now is the time to put your hand up and say, "Yes, I'm prepared to work for seventy-five thousand a year." To be fair, Billy, not everybody got the opportunity to answer the question. So Michael Ray's paid. Some from the TDs take the average industrial wage. I mentioned earlier about cuts in the public That's sector. But the very, I want just to make a very quick point, Billy, about what we need to do. The first thing we have to do is to protect this state because we have a very real crisis coming with private banking debt which is pressing down on this state. We're exposed to the tune of 117 billion euro and it's like the state being asked to pay back somebody's second mortgage. If you were a business person and that business went bust and you owed somebody money, the taxpayer would not come in and pay that money back. One example, one Anglo bond mature a couple of years ago. But the question was what foundation stone would you lay the first 100 years? The first thing we would do is separate private banking debt from sovereign debt. Where we went to the bond markets and borrowed, it should be paid back for in full. But one Anglo Irish bondholder, one individual, was paid back 750 million euros. All of the social welfare cuts in the last budget were 830 million euros. What's okay, fair? Joe Conway wants in on this. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm glad that Michael brought up the idea, uh, the mention of, of example from public representatives. And I give a commitment in, in my manifesto that if I was lucky enough to be privileged enough to be representing the, the people of Waterford as a TD, that I too would take the average industrial wage. I wouldn't want any more than that. But the, the balance of the money that, that would be accruing to me, I have guaranteed that I will in, invest it in registered trusts and charities in County Waterford, which would, over the lifetime of the doll, give 0.3 of a million, so it gives you some, some sort of an idea what TDs are being paid. At okay, very briefly, Jerry Kersey, and then we get But I, I agree with Joe on that comment. But, but straight away, there's 28,000 non EU citizens claiming job seekers allowance in this country, and that should be tackled. Look at all the jobs for Irish people that could create. That's a figure that I've been given. Okay, can we bring in Joe, please? Obviously, have to agree to disagree. Joe Tobin. Billy, Billy, what we would do, and as to answer Michael's question, we would set up three banks. We would set because we own 95 percent of the banks at the moment. And we would send up, set up a national investment bank to facilitate family businesses and small companies, especially uh, domestic mortgage lending bank and a normal and a normal high street commercial bank. Now, they would help the small businesses uh, get off the ground again because the banks are not loan, they're, they're not lending money to, to the people in, in deep trouble. And we would also abolish the, the bonus system that, uh, that, that created uh, the culture bank, you know. And we would remove uh, from office the, all the directors who presided over the failed lending practices. That's what we would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Now, I want to come back very briefly to the comment that was made. We have 28,000 people in other countries. Yes. Yes. That's, yes. that's outrageous. Anybody yes. that comes into this country, if they're entitled to something, they get it. Remember, there's 1,000 Irish people per week leaving this country. I want to try and make the point. Oh, you've got to go to any country in the world, go to Australia, go to America. There's Irish people there, there and they're not being asked to pack up and go home to Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I certainly agree with separating the banking debt and the sovereign debt, absolutely crucial. And reducing politician salaries, absolutely. But there's one thing, if I was asked, one thing that's potentially even more important if you think about it, creating renewable energy systems. Now that is absolutely massive. There's an energy bubble happening, and I'm prepared to call it. Right? This country has to be ready for it. We need renewable energy. We need it for employment. We need it for our economy. But we need it for our civilization going forward. Thank you very much. We'll take a break. We'll be back after the news.